Sunday Sessions, episode 29. Welcome if it's your first time joining. Excited to have you here. My name is Eric Castellano, and on this channel, we talk about tons of topics related to Amazon and growing your Amazon business. So, excited to have you here. Stick around, ask your questions, get them answered live. Stay lit. What's up, everybody? What are we doing? Hey, Jason. What's going on? Uh, yeah, we do use Amex. The plum card is great. Specifically the plum card. It's a great card. You get a 60 day grace period. Um, how do you keep track of when to restock? So there's actually softwares that's designed for that, like Restock Pro, Forecastly is another one. So Stocked, I think actually Forecastly is no longer exist, but Restock Pro and So Stocked are two that are definitely around. So you can check them out and what they do is help you gauge sales and velocities to make better uh, repurchase decisions. I've been doing it one year and a half and no result. Well, you're doing something wrong, Daniel. If you've been doing it anything for a year and a half and you're not seeing any type of results, then you're doing something wrong. And uh, what I would suggest to someone in that situation is you need a coach. You need someone to guide you along this journey because obviously what you're doing is not working and that's okay. We've all hit points like that in our life. So it's okay to be there, but it's important to recognize that the way to get out is by following someone who has a proven path to the success that you're looking for. Do we use a pallet jack scale to weigh our pallets? We do not, but absolutely it's a great option to weigh your pallets. It's quick, it's convenient. Simply slide under the pallet, jack it up, boom, you got your weight. Uh, we actually weigh each ASIN and then we have a simple program that multiplies the ASIN quantity by um, the weight of that product. Oh, how much money do we spend a month on software? That's a good question. I don't know, maybe 40, 50K. Actually, probably less than that, 30, 40K. I would say with all the software, web services, like everything, hosting, um, yeah, probably like 30K. Uh, how many units of a new product do we send into Amazon? So we normally send around 24, 12 to 24 as a test, 12 to 36 really. Uh, but it also depends on the volume that the SKU's doing. If the SKU's selling 5,000 units a month, then 24 isn't really a good test quantity because if they sell in one day, you don't really have a sufficient data to go off of to make a decision on how many more you wanna purchase because you could have just got the buy box on that day when normally you may not get the buy box, right? So it uh, really depends on the volume the listing is currently moving and that's how we make our decisions. But it could be as low as 12, it could be as high as, you know, 120. A few little updates while I'm here. ASD's going down. Uh, the end of August, I believe, we will be out there for a few days doing a trade show walkthrough. So if you've never been to a trade show, you definitely wanna participate in the trade show walkthrough. Also, all members of the Sellers R.I. community get 50% discount on all trade show walkthroughs. So we're excited to see everybody out there. Um, also tonight in about 30 minutes, we have a live Keepa training as well as Q&A. Unfortunately, it's closed. So if you have not gotten the link and registered for that already, you will not be able to join, but we'll be doing those uh, monthly. So keep an eye out for those. They have limited space. So you definitely want to sign up sooner rather than later. I'm trying to think anything else going on, nothing off the top of my head I can think of. For me, it makes sense to have a great Amazon catalog before trying calling distributors. What about for you? No, I, I'm confused by your question. Like your catalog, the, the products that you list on Amazon, you want it to be larger before you contact, start contacting distributors. I, I disagree with that because they, they just want to sell you the products, right? Obviously they want to operate legitimate businesses, you know, but at the end of the day, they want to make money so they don't, they don't really not many will ask for your storefront oh uh, the the rank of the products you see so when you log into amazon and you see a rank that is the current live rank of that right 15 minutes later that rank can change tomorrow the rank can change yesterday the rank would have been different so that is a current live ranking based on the rank of that product in its specific category so this is important to point out that a change in rank does not necessarily indicate a change in sales or a sale. It could indicate a change in its positioning in that ranking within that category. So for example, yeah, your product is ranked 1000 in grocery and 50 products before it go out of stock, right? Now your product rank goes from 1000 to 950. So essentially you're selling more items because your product is ranked better 
it's in better position on Amazon, but no sales created that BSR drop. What do you think about Amazon lending? Do you still use it to grow your business? So we used Amazon lending for many, many years. We used Amazon lending, uh, probably three years. It was great to grow our business. I suggest you using it as well. If you have an opportunity to leverage it to grow your business, it's easy. They literally take it out of your bi-weekly check. Super convenient, it's instant access to pretty hefty amount of capital and towards the end there we were taking you know three loans a year from Amazon lending so absolutely I suggest leveraging Amazon lending is there any way to beat out Amazon on a listing and win the buy box without going lower than their price it's tough you know once in a while they'll give it up I was actually just looking at a listing I was re reviewing some information for the, the live call we're having in about a half hour you know and I saw a listing that we were on that Amazon was on at a lower price but we had the buy box that day or for that moment in that time when I looked at it, right? So there's really no, you know, rhyme or reason or explanation as to how you can win that, but dropping the price is the easiest way. Uh, I found with listings that Amazon's on, throwing advertising at them doesn't really help in, in gaining the buy box, especially when they're dominating. So what I would encourage you to do is really check out the buy box statistics on Keepa before making that buying decision to make sure that they are giving up at least a percentage, a few percentage points of that buy box or else you're gonna get stuck with a lot of inventory. Is the sports supplement space the space that we play in? No, I've dabbled in it. It's not our playground though, you know? We got some different playgrounds, but I've definitely dabbled in the sports supplement space, super competitive, especially for private label products. I just resold products, but the private label supplement space, and cost per clicks, they be out there. How many marketplaces do you guys typically list your SKUs on, or do you just mainly work with Amazon for the bulk of your sales? So we used to list our products on three marketplaces, eBay, Walmart, and Amazon.com. About. 18 months ago, 15 months ago, we stopped listing on those other marketplaces and decided to put all of our efforts into Amazon Wholesale through FBA. Uh, because it was just and is and continues to be so lucratively profitable for us that we don't wanna really allocate any other time to any other business um, in this facility because A, we're limited for space, and B, we see the opportunity that exists with FBA. Uh, what do you think about the remote fulfillment? So the NARF program uh, with Canada and Mexico, we don't use it. They actually, in June, I think second or third, today or tomorrow, their remote fulfillment for fees are going up. So uh, when you look at some of these fees to get the products into those countries, they're pretty expensive. I think the cheapest one they have is like 675, 725, it's up there. Um, so personally, we don't do it. A, cause a lot of account health issues for our uh, Amazon accounts in those countries, um, and B, the fees are slightly higher. So we don't do it, but a lot of people do. A lot of people make great money doing it. It's just not something we do. And it looks like there is no more questions. So everybody, I appreciate your time. It's been amazing. Keep an eye out. Updates about ASD coming. Also, we'll do be in monthly live training. There's one happening tonight. I hope you registered for it. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. See you in a couple minutes. Stay lit.